we welcome in Giants great Carl Banks. Carl, and it was my first time talking to you at least in a very long time. Pleasure to have you on here. Unfortunately, it's always the same circumstance here. Th- this team can't get out of their own way. They can't help themselves. Give me your overall thoughts from a, a game where another disappo- uh, disappointing performance from the Giants in Miami. Well, Sal, number one, it's great to be on with you. Um, but it's it's I don't know if we can sit here and say it's the same old story. I think it's it's worse or to use a word that I used on air yesterday, which isn't a real word. It's worser hmm. than it's ever been. I mean, I, I just think the the operation is broken. I think um, from a personnel execution, from a um a coaching operation from a game management operation. Everything is, it's just a broken operation and it's, it's to the point where it's almost depressing to watch it because the things that should be important just don't seem to be important. There's little excuse to have delay of games after delay of game there's no excuse to take a sack and there's no sense of urgency to get back to the huddle so you can get the play in so that you can get the next playoff and you find yourself being penalized and these are just procedural things right um when your team is down and you're not running a two-minute drill who's who's kind of informing quarterback coach coordinator on you know, the urgency of the situation, right? Um, And then there's just kind of the whole player and personnel execution. No, they're not, they're not a great personnel team. They're not a good offensive line, but there are so many teams in this league with bad offensive lines. You look at Seattle, they tripped into 21 points yesterday, right? The Giants couldn't fall backwards off of a, a, a high dive into a pool of points and get it. It's just, it just seems so difficult. And so when you look at this, you say, what, what is it? Like, it, it's really bad. It is. I, I, I want to say, I don't know if systemic is the right word, but I just think the operation is broken. And, and Joe judge is a guy I want to su- ha- ha- want to see have success And I believe he's the right coach, but man, there's a lot that's got to change about this because, you know, just player execution, when this is a winnable game, they're basically fighting in their weight class. And the other guy decided to be a little more intentional about what was needed to win a game, whereas the Giants couldn't even extend drives because players don't catch football. It's like when you have Saquon Barkley – you hit him in the hands twice with two passes that would extend your drives. And it's just like, it doesn't even seem to matter. Right. And there's, there's, it's not a bonus to like catch footballs. You were, and you are a gifted player. You're expected to make those plays. It's not okay when you don't, you know, and, and you know, you can always say, I'll get the next one, but damn it, they need this one. The same with uh, Darius Slayton. Like, if it hits you in the hands, bro, the opportunities are not, they're not that frequent when you're a bad football team. So you've got to create your own opportunities. And that is the thing that it just, it just hits me as like this laissez fair attitude when they don't make plays. And I get it. Nobody intends to drop footballs. Nobody intends to fumble or miss blocks. But you got when you're a bad team, you got to be intentional about everything you do. You've got to have a heightened sense of awareness just so that you can get yourself out of the hole. It's like I said, it wasn't like they were punching above their weight class. The other team was struggling too, and the Giants defense did a relatively good job most of the game. But it's just – it's tough. I know I haven't given you a chance to say a word, but go ahead. I just had to no, get that off my chest. No, I'm I'm happy to listen to you. I've, I've said my piece, whether it was Friday ripping the Giants for four hours or now here for the majority of the show talking about it. So I'm curious to get your take. You've been around this team. I hear you saying you know similar things, and it's frustrating. 
But why? I mean, we could look back and say, well, this predates Dave Gettleman, which I think it does with Jerry Reese making some wrong picks and the way the Giants are going about trying to replace Coughlin after he left. But what's the end? I'm with you, Carl. I like Joe Judge. I liked his opening press conference, so I do believe he could be a guy that could be a good head coach. However, it's broken. They're worse than they were last year even. So why the regression? What is the problem, where does it start? How do you fix it? I mean, there's so many questions for this team moving forward, but it's a complete well, mess right now. Look, there is there is accountability on the coaching aspect of it, and there's accountability on the player aspect of it. Um, once the season starts, your personnel is what it is, right? Now, we can complain about who, you know, who picked what and why they're on the roster, but they are where they are, and you got to play the cards you dealt. And, you know, the expectation for some of these players is a lot higher uh, than maybe we, we should have because they're just not doing the, the little things. Like, I, I, you know, then the injury situation is a whole nother conversation, but it's just the guys that are available, you've got to play. They just got to play with more of a sense of urgency. And then, again, in terms of game management and understanding situations, the entire staff has to be, aware, you know, in, in the moment as well. Um, you know, it's great for a coach to say he saw some nice things, but, like, that's great. But give you – have your players show you a nice win. Right, because now we're we're out of the, the the progression stage where we we're seeing progress. Progress means you've got to get a win. Like all of these things, and as as each loss amounts, you keep saying you're seeing improvement. Well, you're losing still, and that's not enough improvement, right? And you want to be encouraging to your players where. Maybe time to be a little more demanding. Now I don't know how how he coaches them, and I, I I've seen him be very demanding, but like you know, they're they're in a losing fog, and you know to say you're seeing some positive things, yeah, I don't know if I even want to say that publicly. I you know if I if I'm gonna say I'm like we got to get a lot more better than what I'm seeing. We have to get victory. So, um, you know, defense played well. We, you know, look, as fans, you can see what the good things are, right? And you can see what the bad things are. So it's no sense in, you know, if you're going to state the obvious, you see some guy's improvement, great. But I think at this point, it's about trying to figure out how to get a victory. Yeah, I was surprised to hear Joe Judge go the opposite way after that game. Now, maybe he wanted to change it up a little bit from the, you know, constant, well, we got to do better and this and that type coach talk or whatever without really calling guys out. But if they fired Garrett a couple weeks ago, that was a different, totally different tone in the postgame press conference. And yesterday when they scored nine points against the Miami Dolphins, it was, oh, I saw some good things, maybe making an excuse without his starting quarterback. But that wasn't an issue last year when they won games with Colt McCoy as a backup, you know, starting quarterback when Daniel Jones went went down. So I was surprised by that, Carl. I Give me your thought. You like Joe Judge. What are your thoughts on him and Daniel Jones moving forward? Are, are these the right two guys next year to, to go at it? Would you look to make a change? I mean, uh, that's kind of where we're at with this Giants team right now. We know it's a lost season, well, so it's evaluating next year. Well, if you're evaluating next year, um, the, the question is what are your alternatives? If you have alternatives, then you have a real decision to make. But if you are, if you, especially at the quarterback position, I know everybody wants to get rid of somebody, but what are you replacing him with? That is the question. Well, like, let me, let you me ask you. you can say get rid of him. Based on just what, and that's fair, but based on just watching Daniel Jones, now, this is year three. And remember, Cole, coming into the year, last year the Giants played well. They had the defense, Joe Judge building that foundation, well-coached team, competitive, even with better teams. This was the year that they brought in Galladay, Saquon's back healthy, they draft Tony, uh, th this was the year that this was the make or break year in year three for Daniel Jones. What have you seen so far in year three from him? Inconsistent. Um, I think he's a product of the system that he's he's working in. He's a product of the availability of some of his uh, key players that could help us evaluate. You know what he could do. 
and now he's hurt. So, um, in fairness, I, I just think, you know, unless you have a viable alternative that we can say today is the guy who's going to replace Daniel Jones, then there's no conversation. Well, there's a conversation, but there's mm-hmm. there's no absolute solution. So you can have, we can all say we don't know what he is, right? But what are we replacing him with? And- Do you think Russell Wilson wants to come to another bad? His offensive line is bad. The Giants' offensive line is worse, right? Um, and it, well, they may be close, um, but it, it's you know, New York is not the the uh, glitz and glamour that attracts people anymore. I mean, uh, uh, good athletes anymore. You got the, winning attracts talent, and you got to build it from within first. Um, so I, I don't know. So like you say, is, do we know enough? No, we don't know enough about Daniel Jones. Um, I know enough to say that unless you have a viable alternative that we can put on the table today to have a discussion, then I just think, you know, the evaluation process keeps going until his contract's up. What about Saquon? You touched on it, dropping a couple pads. Look, Saquon seems like a great kid. I, I hated the pick overall. I-, I didn't care if he turned out to be Jim Brown. You never take a running back, especially in today's NFL, number two overall. But forget about that. The inability to stay on the field, and even when he is on the field, I'm seeing, you know, Wayne Goldman last year running the football harder between the tackles. Booker this year. What are you seeing with Saquon Barkley? Is it him or is it the offensive line? It's both. It's both. Um, I think, you know, he had a couple really good games. He struggled early. But the things that are more disturbing uh, to me when it comes to Saquon is the little things that we take for granted that he and, and that the offense takes for granted that he would uh, would be able to do, like catching the ball out of the backfield and – um, getting a first down when he gets a favorable matchup, and that's not that's not there anymore. And he's obviously been you know disappointing. And you look at it overall. Now, do you think Carl that they will the Giants organization make a change with Gettleman here? I mean, I know it's a tough spot, and they want to be loyal, and he's been here for a while, but. If the team fails again and what was a playoff year by their standards, I mean, the ownership came out and said we should be competing for a playoff spot this year. Do you think that they now <laughs> you know, maybe see, okay, well, this is a failure? Uh, they make a change with Gettleman? What is your feel for that? Well, it's not hard. I mean, it shouldn't be that hard to make the playoffs in the NFC East. Look what made it last year and right. look how they're stumbling into it this year. So that wasn't an unreasonable expectation. Um, I don't know. If they're going to, and I I made it a point just never to comment um, in terms of when guys have jobs like that. But I I am sure that um, everything will be taken into consideration. Um, Do I expect something to change? Yes, I do. I don't know what it is. Um, And, you know, I just don't call for guys being fired when they have a job. Which I you know? understand. Yeah, no, I understand and respect it. And it's unfortunate, Carl, that that's kind of where we're at. I mean, what's left to say? But the we- nature, listen, I will say this the nature of the business, everybody knows it. It's result oriented. So the facts will show that they, there hasn't been a lot of success where it needed to be. Yeah. And that to me is on it. Now, like I said, I think their problems are deeper. I think it predates even Dave Gettleman. But, yeah, but it, it's just so, something's got to change. It can't be. It's it's actually hard, Carl. Kind of to your point, it's hard to be this bad for this long. You'd back into yeah. some. You'd back into some games where you'd win by scoring twenty seven points or thirty points by accident. It just hasn't happened yeah. consistently for this team. Yeah, and that, that's the thing about it. it. It is hard to be this bad. That's why I say it is broken. Like if you put a pool of points <laughs> and you say jump off this this diving board, they'd miss the pool. At this point, just, every time they get in the red area there, it's it's a field goal. So it's 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 mind boggling. And again, I think Joe Judge is the right coach. I think he might need some better um, play calling around him. Um, I think 
with a better better system, offensive system in place, something that is relevant to today's game, they would be able to stumble into points. Like it just it's just mind boggling that you can't with the talent you have uh, be able to put points on the board. You just struggle, and then you have. You know, the amount of injuries, that's got to get better, too, because, you know, you got guys, and I was having this conversation, are you paying players these days? And it's not just the Giants. It's around the league. Like, are you paying and praying? Like, are you paying and hoping you could get 75% of a season from players? Or are you um, are you just saying, okay, well, we're just going to overpay and see what we get out of a guy because – it's just hard to, you know, the guys that you can used to be able to count on to be there for you, they're not. They're missing blocks of games. Like, there was one or two guys, uh, um, a team that you could say, well, he's injury prone. But he was never counted on to be a major contributor. Now all your major contributors that teams are counting on are missing blocks of games, and that, that makes it tough too. And hard to evaluate that way when that's the case. You know, yeah. maybe at some point they get it turned around. Obviously, this year, another lost cause. We appreciate that. I know it's difficult, Carl. I mean, we would rather, much rather be talking about Giants wins and hopes of a playoff and what they could do next week against the Chargers. But unfortunately, yeah. like you said, it's not even the same old. It's worse than the same old. Yeah. Thanks for your time, Carl. Appreciate, uh, appreciate you hopping on. Okay, sir. There you go, Carl Banks. Look, I mean... It's one thing for me to sit here and say it. When you're talking about a Giants legend like that, saying it's broken and it's worse, it's even worse than we thought or worse than the, what we've gotten used to, that's a bad sign. 